Hello, once again, nerds of YouTube. It's been a hot minute. Today I'm coming at you with some information on how to contribute to open source software, okay? So we're gonna talk about why you might wanna contribute, what you can work on, what to do if you get stuck, and what you're gonna need to know to do it, okay? Get right into it. So why might you wanna to contribute to open source? It is a fantastic way, fantastic way, okay, to collaborate and build connections with other developers. It gives you incredible experience for your first developer job. It can really, really help with your imposter syndrome by giving you that confidence, knowing that you've crushed issues, you've merged PRs, mm -mm getting in there before you even got your first job, okay? Very, very good for that. And additionally, a lot of open source companies will actually look to their contributors list, and especially if you're super engaged with their communities and stuff like that too, uh, you're gonna get their attention. They're gonna be like, yo, this person's already working for us for free, and look at how cool they are. And then they're gonna wanna hire you. It's science. Get after it, okay? And then here are some ideas of like what you can work on as a beginner going into open source software. What you can do is you can actually look for low hanging fruits. So basically what this means for an issue is it's something that is easy enough to change and test both of those things, write unit tests for your pull requests. Okay. So that people can easily test the behavior, include screenshots, be like so detailed. You don't want them to have to read the code to know what the changes were that you made. And one thing that I would super recommend is always file an issue before submitting a pull request, because it is the worst thing as a maintainer to have to say no to somebody that has put time and effort into a feature that doesn't align with the vision of your project. It sucks. So please create an issue or comment on an existing issue saying, yo, I wanna fix this. Can I do it? And then somebody's gonna be like, yeah, or no, or whatever, okay? This is what I recommend. Uh, if there aren't very many issues for something that you're like pretty determined to contribute to, another thing that you can do that is super helpful is write tests, improve their test coverage. And then what to do if you get stuck. So a very important part of being a developer is learning how to navigate code. So learning how to be able to basically find a solution by backtracking from your current position and being like, yo, that's a bug. This is where it is. To do that, you're gonna need to be a master of your tools. A couple of tools that I recommend that have helped me immensely in getting familiar with new code bases are RipGrep and more recently, SourceGraph. So RipGrep, I use this always for local repos. It is so helpful. So basically I've cloned the repo, I've got all the code just sitting powerfully on my computer and I can just RipGrep, use RG and then have a string of characters, which can literally just be a keyword if you're lazy like me and don't wanna learn how to write regular expressions. Or it can be an actual regular expression that is ve a very, very specific sequence of characters. But uh, SourceGraph, I pretty much use that for remote repos, and then I usually use RipGrep for local repos. And then one thing that you can obviously expect with any new code base is that you'll have questions about it. <laughs> so one thing that I majorly recommend checking out is seeing if there is a an existing community for whatever project it is that you're working on. A lot of open source projects these days have communities associated with them on Discord, Slack, IRC chat, all these different places, okay? And there are great places where you are able to interact with the community and ask questions, and you can usually find it on their GitHub or their website. Another thing that you can also use to ask questions is either creating an issue or discussions if they have that enabled in the repo. Usually that's kind of the point of discussions, so if they have it enabled, probably go there, but otherwise, Creating an issue is also valid. And remember that if you're going to ask a question, nobody's gonna spoon feed you. So please make sure that you have done your due diligence in checking the existing source code, checking the documentation, checking your language's documentation if applicable, and to try and answer your questions for yourself 
first before asking a question. If you do that, you will leave such a good first impression of like, yo, she's asking some smart questions. That's kind of cool. Okay, she's done her research. I appreciate that. Let me help her out. Let me, let me be very thorough in my response to this girl. Okay. And then if anything is unclear about how to get your developers environment set up, definitely mention it because oftentimes it is like a more senior developer that's kind of giving you the lowdown of like how to run it and things like that. Who's like, if it's unclear, then it might actually prevent other people from being able to contribute as well. So maybe just like mention it. Finally, what do you need to know? Git, obviously we're working with GitHub. So you need to know how to use the version control system that is Git. Okay. So more specifically, I would recommend looking into conventional commits. Personally, I found this helped me a lot with learning how to write meaningful commit messages. Also, you'll find that some repos do follow conventional commits, some don't. I always recommend just following whatever pattern you see in the history of the project, whatever format they have. I usually just try and try and like, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Just, just, just copy that. I would also look out what the difference is between merge and rebase if you don't know what that is already. Personally, I prefer rebase. A lot of my friends prefer rebase. My organization prefers rebase. A lot of people argue that that rebase leaves a cleaner commit history. And then I would look at squashing commits because you might actually get a comment on your PR asking you to squash it into a single commit. Another couple of things that I'll mention, honorable mentions, because they're completely optional, but they're very cool features of Git that a lot of people uh, probably don't know about is cherry picking commits and then partial commits. Another couple of things that you're gonna have to know that are GitHub specific are how to create an issue, how to create a pull request. GitHub has very, very good documentation. So I will link to their documentation below. I personally would also look into writing user stories. Finally, don't forget to look if they have a contributing.md file. This will tell you all the information that you need to know as a potential contributor on their repo. If they don't have this file, you can kind of safely assume that it's just like freestyle, just do your own little thing. And that's that. All right. You can also, of course, look at like closed issues to try and find answers to any of the stuff that you are, any questions that you have and stuff like that. Look at like merged PRs. Anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, I super freaking appreciate you, nerd. And you're also a huge nerd. Okay, thank you. Thank you.